Okay, now we'll go through some of the basic features in ECU Editor software. We'll get real in depth, but uh, these kind of briefly go over some of the initial things that you can change that uh, don't necessarily require a lot of tuning skill, etc. Um, once you're in the software here, when we first boot up, I've already done this, but you want to click File and then New. That'll generate your base map. The first thing you could do would be change the uh, the rev limiter, and the factory rev limiter is at 10,800 RPM. And if you go in this drop down menu, you can see you've got a, a wide range of different RPM values that you can use. Currently, up to 11,500 have been attested and you know officially approved everything else above that would still be considered experimental as with everything on this uh, you know use at your own risk it is possible to damage your bike and or yourself or crash um, if you do anything stupid but anyway we'll try setting uh, just for demonstration here I'll set this to 11,200 rpm this checkbox here will remove the six gear Restriction to 186 miles an hour or 10,200-ish RPM. By checking that, that uh, that will be lifted. And then you've also got your limiter type, soft cut or hard cut. Soft cut would be where you actually pull some fuel out of a couple of cylinders before the hard cut. Hard cut would be just completely shuts everything off. Hard cut would be the safer route for guys with wet nitrous kits or turbo bikes with secondary injectors. So I'll click... Uh, hard cut here we'll hit close um, something that's kind of neat if you're doing part throttle tuning um, or any tuning on the bike really but if we uh, if we connect to our engine data here right now you can see my RPM says 300 I'm just I've got an ECU sitting on the bench but nothing is really active right now um, if you're on a if you had your bike here you could turn the key on Flip your toggle switch down so the green light comes on, the green LED comes on. And you can see that uh, my tack actually dropped to zero there. And my uh, the other numbers changed. So we actually are connected to the ECU's output. Um, generally, it's going to look for the engine to be restarted or the key to be cycled when that happens. Um, I just went ahead and turned my power off just so I could demonstrate that. It says restart engine at the top. If I turn my power supply to my ECU back on, you can see now my engine RPM is back to zero. And I've got some other values going on here. Um, something else that's kind of neat here, if you shut this data off, you've got a drop-down menu here of all different values that you can look at. Um, one of them, you could look at the supply voltage going to the ECU. Turn this data back on. And this must be something weird where I've got powering it off the bench, but that doesn't appear to show anything here at the moment. Let me shut that back off. Um, I'll use a gear position sensor for demonstration. We'll turn it on here. And you'll see that it's showing a, a value of zero, which is basically zero. I'm sorry, neutral. Um, I've got a gear position sensor connected to this ECU that I'll go ahead and just manually cycle by hand. And you can see I've put in first gear, second gear, third gear, fourth, etc. You could do this on the bike, as well as look at throttle position. You know, any of the sensors that the bike is looking at, it's pretty pretty convenient, um, especially for dyno tuning. And if you're actually had the bike running right now, and you go in and look at your fuel maps here, you could actually see the highlighted blue cell is which cell the ECU is actually referring to when it's looking for fueling and ignition and because I'm just sitting on a bench here my throttle position is sitting at a hundred percent and we're sitting at zero RPM so this cell coincides with where the map is at right now and this is in the TPS map which is where all of your fueling from eleven percent to hundred percent throttle happens then you've also got your IAP fuel map this is where all the part throttle tuning, anything below 11% throttle happens. And this is in kilopascals. So 120, this would be a lot of engine vacuum, where zero would be basically atmospheric pressure. Um, or you can see here, we're sitting at almost atmospheric pressure, you know, in the 800 RPM cell, because we're sitting at zero. 
if we were actually running the bike on the dyno here, sitting here idling, you know, we'd probably be somewhere, you know, in this range. And the blue cell would just kind of walk around wherever you were at. So if you were on the dyno and running the bike up through the gears, part throttle, and had some lean, some rich spots, you could actually watch the blue cell where it goes, you know, with making a note or... If you've got your mouse handy, you just start highlighting cells that you want to add to or take away fuel. And it's real easy, works similar to a power commander, but as far as adding or taking away fuel, there's four key commands that you can use here. And I'll just bring up an on screen keyboard to kind of demonstrate that. Um, I've got a group of cells highlighted here, and we can either use the plus and minus keys which will bump these values one unit or you can use the asterisk and the division sign which will bump them in five percent increments and the IAP fuel map is fairly sensitive um, so you want to kind of start off small and see where that takes you you know say we had a lean condition in these group of cells right here we wanted to add some fuel I could use my hit the shift button here hit plus it also doesn't seem to be working here. And as I hit the plus button here, you can see up in the upper right hand corner, it tells me that it's adding, you know, plus one, plus two, plus three in this fuel table here. So that would richen up the mixture. Um, the numbers that you're looking at in here are a volumetric efficiency table. There are other things that are taken into account, such as air intake temperature, coolant temperature, um, voltage at the ECU, uh, barometric pressure, things like that. Uh, but changing these numbers will directly change your fueling um, in this particular area. So that's how you can make some changes. And the nice thing, too, once you've made changes, it'll show you in the map here. It'll shade it a different color. Like if I pick these and actually pulled some fuel out, it'll show it as a different color. And I think if you go even more, it'll turn it'll turn red. So that would be your part throttle tuning. Would be you know basically in these cells here, um, anywhere if you're on the dyno that you saw rough spots that you could actually see your cell highlighted in here, you're below your 11% throttle, would put you in this IAP fuel map. And then for some of the more aggressive stuff, if you look here at your TPS fuel map, you can see the cells start at 9%, so there's some blending that happens, and they go all the way up to 100%. So say, for example, we were tuning for you know, different cams, some ported head work, uh, different pipe, and some other stuff. We needed to add a bunch of fuel up top at 100% throttle. You know, we could go in here and say we wanted to add 10% more fuel just as a, as a starting point and highlight some cells. And if I wanted to do percentage increments, I can just use the asterisk key here. And one click will bump me up 5%. The next click will bump me up 10%. You'll see the number up here actually shows um, how many units it changed it. So 5%, 10%, 15%, the actual units that it changes is going to depend on what the absolute value is here. So, you know, 5% change on 200 would be a value change of 10. Um, that's pretty much how that works. And we can close this off. And if you wanted to look at your ignition maps, they work pretty much the same. It gives us an error message here, or a warning message here, telling us that all gears will now use this ignition map. ECU editor uh, is attempted to make tuning your bike on the dyno and for the road much easier. There are actually many, many ignition tables inside of the ECU. Um, to go through and change all of them is a pretty big hassle. Uh, a compromise by doing this, by putting... Basically, the fifth gear timing values across all works out pretty nice. Um, you sort of end up with a TRE type mod where you actually get full ignition timing in all of the gears, um, but without the ill effect of messing up your ram air compensated um, gear based fuel, etc.
So if you look in here, this table works basically off of throttle positions from you know zero to 100 percent, and then engine RPM. And then you can see your ignition timing here. Um, these values, I don't know that I would take as an absolute number, as some of this is still under a little bit of development. But as far as adding or taking a little bit of timing away, the numbers are fairly accurate. You know, if you were running whatever combination you decided you wanted to pull out, say three degrees of timing, you could highlight these cells here and use the negative button. And you'll see up here it's telling us we've taken negative one degree out, negative two, negative three. If I click somewhere else, you can see that the cells are highlighted, showing that they've been changed. I guess also worth noting, and this was also available in the fuel table, but there's this uh, U button here. This will unify all of your cylinder banks. There's two cylinder banks um, in the ECU stock. And I forget which combination of cylinders it is, but uh, there's actually different fueling and different timing values. They're fairly minute, but um, that uh, have different values. So by unifying that, you actually flash the same value across the board. Uh, some guys feel that it's easier to tune the bike by doing this. I haven't personally done so, but uh, that is an option that you can use. So I'll show you real quick. We'll go back to the fuel map. And the fuel map has the same thing. It has this U here. Also worth noting in here, you've got an MS fuel map, and you've also got a MS ignition map. That stands for map switching. Um, stock, we're actually set up to have two different ignition slash fuel maps, which is very convenient for nitrous or for running race fuel and pump fuel, that kind of thing. Um, we'll get into that in another little tutorial here, but uh, just so that you know what they are. And that's some of the basic settings.